Welcome back. In this video we're going to create a log pickup. So I've left off where we were in the last video and just as a reminder I've already done it however remember now that we've got something in here and we, we know it's working we've seen the folder we're going to go file save as and I'm just going to overwrite um, the one that I've already done but I've increased my version number We'll place it and there we go all right so we've got our second version so let's jump into our area here and the first thing we want to do is to add a spawn point where we're going to make a start all right so once again spin around so you can see that the back um, is towards your back and to the front now this spawn point is uh, big and ugly and so we're going to quickly resize and get rid of the decal that's in here we don't need that and we'll make our size down the bottom of our spawn point we'll just make it uh, 4 by 0.5 by 4 all right and it's sitting well just above the ground but it won't matter all right and we'll come back up here and we do want it to be anchored but we don't want the player to collide with it they'll just fall straight onto the ground and lastly we just want to change the transparency to one okay <clears throat> so now we've got a, a spawn point where we will always land in this spot uh, while we're testing the game and then you can you can change your mind where you want to put it once uh, the game is developed a little bit all right so in front of our spawn point and um, well actually let's let's just make this point five I'm, I'm going to make a point five just so I know where it is in case I move around um, and then we'll make it invisible when we get to the end okay so in front of this let's start by creating a log so a log should be a, sort of a cylinder just like this all right and we will call this log part and now we'll give it a color like a log uh, so I'm not sure what sort of color you, you want to make it or type of timber etc that looks pretty good just brown and we can make um, so a wood planks and I think that looks pretty good as a, as a log all right so with our log part we want to come down and check that it's anchored um, initially because we don't want it to roll around on the ground uh, and we're going to turn off can collide so that when the player runs into it they don't sort of bump over it or anything they just they'll run through it they'll make contact with it and then it will disappear all right next let's add a script to our log part and we'll call this log script and we're going to set up our touched function in here so like I said uh, when we did the touch function originally this is used a lot so you get lots of practice at it uh, I strongly encourage you to type um, and redo this over and over again until it gets into your head where you can do it automatically so avoid copying and pasting you you don't learn nearly as much um, or understand as much if you just copy and paste okay uh, I just noticed a, I've, I've added a little character in there or quote mark I've just changed that all right so local okay and we'll just call it log because that's what it is equals script dot parent we're going to use a debounce so db equals true and then we can put in our touched so log dot touched colon remember we the colon helps us connect connect function and the part that is hitting the log of the character which will be their leg or arm or head or something all right and once we've got that we can get our character which will be hit dot parent and we want to find the humanoid inside of the character so humanoid equals char find first child okay humanoid 
Now we bring in our conditional statement. So if DB and humanoid, then we want to run our code. And the first thing we want to do is change our db, our dbounce to false with a reset down the bottom here of say, I don't know, we'll make it three and then we'll change db back to true. So next thing we want to do, because we're making use of leader stats and we're going to create some variables that we need to keep track of, we need to make sure we get the player, okay? Because remember, for each player, they have a leader stats folder. So we need the player first, and then we need to find their folder. So local, and we'll put in here player equals, okay, game dot players find first child chart dot name, okay? That will find our player for us. Now that we have our player, remember when we run the game, they have a leader stats folder in there. Okay, so the player stats, that's where we're going to access them, change them, or get them. So we'll create a new variable that's called p stats. So when I write code, I always start with p if it's to do with the player, okay? That, that helps remind me of what it's used for. So p stats equals player. And now we're going to use a different method called wait for the child. Now wait for child simply means um, rather than just rushing the code, rushing through and trying to find something, sometimes when you have a lot of code in games, um, everything doesn't load in exactly the right order or, or the same order each time, and the, the bigger the game it gets, uh, the longer it takes to load. So in this case, if we tried to find the leader stats folder, and it hadn't been created yet, and we had find first child, then we would get an error and it would return nil, so keep it's telling us we can't find it. So when we say wait for child, it just puts a pause in there to say, okay, well, if it's not there, we want to keep doing this until we find it and then return it to here, okay? However, if it's not there at all, then you, you'll also get uh, an error. So leader stats, so remember, that's what we called our folder in here. And we want to always refer to the name in here that we give it, okay? So not this over here. Even though it's exactly the same in this case, it won't always be. So we've got leader stats there. Now when we pick up our log, just like we did before, I think we'll just, at the moment, uh, make it disappear. However, we will be spawning these logs and we'll actually destroy them later. But for uh, the sake of testing, let's just make it disappear. So log transparency okay, equals one. That will make it invisible. Log can collide, even though, well, we don't. it's not collidable anyway. So we don't even need to change that. We, we left that off before, so it doesn't matter. All right, but if, if you did leave it on, you would need to turn it off, okay? So down here, we're going to just simply reverse this then after the wait period, back to one, uh, back to zero, sorry, to make it reappear. So we've got uh, a bit of code here ready to go. Let's save that and test it and see if we get any errors. All right, so, so far, so good, no errors. We have our log here. When I run over it, it disappears. And after three seconds, it reappears. Very good. So remember what I said earlier? Okay, we've written some code. It's all working the way we should. Let's increase our version. So save as, change this to increase by one. And now we can do something different, knowing that this is working. So in a game, obviously, we want to keep track of how many logs the player have, uh, how many 
log supplier has picked up, whether they have a log and all that sort of thing. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to add to this code and we're going to add to our leader stats to create some variables. So I'll see you in that video and we'll start to um, keep track of what our player is doing. I'll see you there.